Hey there everybody, welcome to Shaney Entertainment. Today guys, I, I'm, I'm doing a different type of video. Today I'm talking about something that um, I started thinking about. And um, I started watching some, some documentaries recently about the past. <laughs> I'm a history buff, guys. I love to know about the past. The way I see it is, you can't figure out where you're going until you know where you've been. And that's why I love looking at the past. Because we have a tendency to repeat ourselves. And if we don't look back, we may just, you know, make the same mistakes. So I learned a few things. And, and what I've learned is, you know, we, we, we come to think of this time that we're living in as uh, kind of like a new retro 80s. With the pop culture being very 80s and the reboots of all the 80s reboots and stuff. And we like to look at it and say, hey, you know, I mean, we're reliving the 80s. And the truth of the matter is, I've discovered that we're not living the 80s at all. <laughs> We're kind of living something else. We're living, we're living a different decade altogether. If you look at the evidence, and the parallels are uncanny. The time that we're actually living in is the late 60s and the early 70s is what I've pinpointed it down as, as, as to exactly where, where we're living right now. And we're living it through the 60s and the 70s, but we're living it through with the skin of the 80s. You know, we're kind of like plopping the 80s on top of the skin of the 60s and the 70s. And that's why when we look at the stuff that we, we remember from the 80s, and we're like, just doesn't add up. This doesn't feel right. And it doesn't feel right because it's not right. It's not what we remember because, you see, we're trying to live a time that we loved. But in reality, where we are right now in history, in our lifetime, is parallel to a time that was very tumultuous. A time that, that, that the country was divided. The countries were all divided, left and right, divided more than ever before. Probably ever before in history. I mean, you, you, we think about us being divided today and that the world, that we live in a chaotic time. Late 60s, early 70s, the time was, couldn't have been more divided. People couldn't have been more divided. Race relations couldn't have been more divided. Feminism was on a rise. Identity politics was a thing back then, and it was way worse than what we know of it today. So to talk about this, I'm going to bring a guy who I wasn't alive during that time. I was a child of the 80s, I was raised in the 80s, and I was too young to remember anything that went on in the, 60, in the 70s and the 60s and 70s. So I'm going to bring on someone who may have, who may have a little more input on that, that era. So I introduce to you guys once again, my uncle, Billy. Hey guys, uh, how you doing? So you lived through the 60s and the 70s, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, as a matter of fact, oh, yeah, I can remember the summer of 69. Oh, yeah. I got my first real six string. Oh, yeah, at the five and dime. I played it until my uh, fingers bled. Oh, boy, yeah, that was the summer of 69. You, you, you're quoted by an Adams right now. That's, that's not really your life. What, what are you talking about? That's, that's Brian Adams. You're singing summer of 69 from Brian Adams. You, that's not your life. Uh, maybe it was a coincidence. You don't know. Maybe he took that song uh, based on my life. Tom Brian Adams took took your life into consideration when he he, he made that song. Well, you don't know anything. Uh, you don't know. Maybe maybe we, we both had the same summer of '69. A lot of people had uh, that. A lot of things happened that year. Yes, and a lot of things did happen that year, guys. Right? A lot of things that we can kind of relate to. Well, what 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 are those things that happened in '69? Well, that. Uh, not 69, but 68, uh, Richard Nixon, uh, he uh, uh, voted as uh, president of the United States. January 20th, 1969, inauguration day for the 37th president of the United States. And that was uh, one of the most divisive uh, elections that ever happened uh, in, the, in the country, uh, you know, uh, ever. Ever? Well, uh, well, until, of course, uh, you know, recent with uh, Trump. Exactly, that's my point. See the parallels, little guys? Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, well, yeah, I see what you're doing. Uh, you're trying to, you're trying to make the correlation. I, I, I see what you're trying to do here. Okay, well, uh, yeah, well, I can see there's a correlation there because, uh, you know, a lot of people there uh, was divided. You had the, uh, the left and the right. The, the left hated Nixon and uh, the right liked him, and so they were... There were virtually two Americas when Richard Nixon took office, and they collided that day in the first major disruption of an inaugural ceremony in the history of the Republic. It was a huge division of the uh, of people in the United States at the time, and uh, you know they, they couldn't even do the inauguration, as I recall, uh, properly because there was a lot of rioting and a lot of things like that. So eggs were thrown, obscenities were thrown, that we couldn't even inaugurate a freely elected president with the dignity and the pomp and circumstance that such an occasion demands. And it was really a terrible low point in American history. Exactly. But that's not all that happened, right guys? It was Vietnam, time that, of an endless war, a war that seemed to go on forever. And Richard Nixon at the time made promises, promises about ending the war, which never happened. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, of course, though, uh, you know, we, we here in Canada, we never went to Vietnam. It's funny, you, you say you're from Canada, but you got a New York accent. Yeah, well, uh, who the hell gave it to me, you, you idiot? You keep breaking the fourth wall. Well, you keep making the damn wall. Stop making the stupid wall and I'll stop breaking it, you numb nut. Anyway, back on topic. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so there was a Vietnam War. And what happened, you know, during the Vietnam War is further division of people, right? You know, oh, yeah, like, uh, the, you know, the, the right and the people on the right side. Of course, they, you know, they wanted to support the troops and, uh, you know, and all that stuff. And the left, you know, stuff bringing over from the hippie era, love and peace and all that sort of thing. You know, they were very against the war and uh, they, they... Pullout continued. New recruits, overwhelmingly draftees, felt they were being asked to fight a war already lost on the battlefield and despised at home. In America by the early 70s, protesters against the war included some of the men who had fought in it, once eager soldiers who now felt lied to and betrayed. I pray the time will forgive me and my brothers for what we did. And only... A lot of division there, a lot of uh, fighting, a lot of arguing. And there was riots, there was even uh, like cops shooting students at rallies, and uh, all kinds of crazy things were going on, bombing. Uh... At Kent State University in Ohio, the ROTC building was firebombed. The governor called in the National Guard. Taunts and rocks were thrown. Before it was over, four college students were shot and killed. The, the backlash of opinion against campus demonstrators would only grow. Following Kent State, some 75 colleges were closed down for the rest of the year. The cause, they said, was student unrest. That's right. It was a huge, huge time of division between the two sides, and, and then we got into violence, a lot more so than today. I mean, we talk about Antifa and all that stuff, but this, this makes that look way worse. Oh, yeah, it was, it was crazy, I uh, tell you. And there was some blood spilt. But it was all in anger, all in vengeance. Let's get them. And, and a lot of people, including myself, was was releasing the the hate and and the feelings that you had. Right now, what do we got? We got the what the, the Black Lives Matter. What do they have? Well, yeah, there was the Black Panthers, and then it was the the Black Panthers, the Gray Panthers. I think there was the Pink Panthers. <laughs> uh, 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 I hated that damn Panther. Yeah. Creep me out. Why? It's cool. I I don't know. I have, uh, I have issues. So there was a lot of a lot of that stuff going on back in the day. There was a lot of division, man. A lot of division. There was a lot of race tension. Oh yeah, there was gender wars. There was uh, it was everything that you're seeing today happened in the 60s and 70s. A lot of nihilism. The movies were reflected by the, all the by the times, and it was very nihilistic. Outer culture's favorite music and movies. By the late 60s, everything was political. <laughs> One of the big movies in this superheated time became a metaphor for the widening gap between the straight and the hip, the old and the young. Easy Rider. Oh, yeah. Easy Rider. That film was so extraordinarily unlike anything that had gone before. Its sense of really growing out of the culture, uh, not even trying to reflect the culture, but just being the culture. What the hell is this? Troublemakers? That had so much to say about the society, about the becoming a society of two cultures along generational lines and other kinds of lines. Oh yeah, very a lot of dark movies, uh, Clockwork Orange, and uh, very uh, very dark dark uh, images and things. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of people really felt hopeless in those days, and uh, it even got to a point where like the the protests got so bad, and and Nixon they started figuring out that he was he was uh, he was not a crook, <laughs> or so he said. I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Growing scandals stemming from a break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters in the office complex known as Watergate. Yeah, and they, were, they went after him pretty hardcore. The media not, not quitting on him and going after him, pounding him pretty good to the point where he quit. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. 
He just couldn't take it anymore. He was the accusations and everybody around him was getting pinned and for, 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 for doing shady things. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. There's a lot of similarities here. Yeah, the gas shortages. The extremely cold weather this winter has dangerously depleted our supplies of natural gas and fuel oil. There was a lot of people are losing jobs due to, to uh, advancements in technology. Yep, in fact, Detroit was ruined. Oh yeah, Detroit. Detroit went under around that time. I think you know the the big boom of of the automotives of the United States was being uh, threatened by Japan and Germany. And a lot of people picked up and left the city of Detroit. In fact, so many people were leaving at that time that a saying cropped up of you know the last person to leave Detroit, please turn out the lights. A lot of the same things we're dealing with today, guys. Parallels are uncanny. And oh yeah, don't forget the real horrible thing about the 70s. What, what was that? Disco music. Disco music is the real horrible thing. Oh boy. And you like those big collars and those big damn parachute, uh, what do you call them, bell bottoms and the roller skating uh, at the discotheques. Oh god, that was, oh man. The worst part of the 70s was that. Be thankful you, you, we don't have that. We've got Twitter. Yes, we, we do have Twitter. Is, is it comparable? Uh, I prefer Twitter. <laughs> but the culture was very riddled in uh, nihilism and uh, very self-defeating. I think it, a lot of people would have thought that America was, was going down. We were upset and we were frustrated and, and we were, just didn't seem like anything was working for, for America. The even Americans thought that uh, the dividing was never going to end and that people were always were just going to continue until, uh, until the country erupted. That, that was the fear in those days. The true problems of our nation are much deeper, deeper than gasoline lines or energy shortages, deeper even than inflation or recession. What people were saying was, um, we have a wounded country, we have a spiritual crisis, a kind of crisis of morale. We can see this crisis in the growing doubt about the meaning of our own lives. Exactly, we're kind of, and that's what I'm saying right now, that's, we're having the same fear, is that, that, that this, the fighting of the, of the, of the SJWs versus, the, you know, we're all fighting this, this war, we're fighting against each other, and we think that this is like some, some, some time in history that we've never, We've never experienced or something, but but we've been here before, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This history, history will say that we've always we've been this time before, and, and you know we're reliving it again. Uh, yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. See, the reason why we want to relive the eighties was after culture survived the seventies, eighties rang in a brand new time, a time of prosperity and time of and culture. We kind of came together. The euphoria carried over into the next decade, where it joined with a new roaring prosperity that brought riches to more people than any time since the 1920s. The 80s, a non-stop party. Everything was hot. Where image is everything. It was the last decade of glamour. Consumption is conspicuous. It was heady. Totally. And living is large. Oh my God, this is awesome. We're going up in smoke, man. It's just insane. The 80s, the decade that made us. Oh yeah, yeah, the 80s was real fun. I, I remember the 80s and uh, the big hair and the flock of seagulls and uh, the colors. Oh yeah. <laughs> My favorite time, yeah, that's right. The reason is because everything else before was very tumultuous. And when we look back in the history, we think to ourselves, we always want to look back to the best times, not to the worst. So when we ask ourselves, why do we want to be the, the 80s? The 80s we had pulled out of the mire from the 70s and the 60s, and we kind of came together for the first time in a while. Yes, there was issues in the 80s. It wasn't all great, right? But we finally come to some sort of peace. The, the Cold War, yes, it started really bad, but then it ended all right. We started coming together with Russia. There was a lot of, a lot of great things about the 80s that made peace. There was no real major war that we could think of in the 80s that we were involved in, except for the war on drugs. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was, uh, and, and Reaganomics also helped, I think. Uh, it screwed us later on, but it helped at the time. <laughs> You wouldn't have the cartoons and uh, without Reaganomics. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, we, the cartoons and you know, the, taking off the restrictions of, I guess, business 
led to a huge boom in the 80s and that's why we're seeing we see everything that, that we have now is the culture had money and they were they were spurging and they were being creative and allowed to be creative that's it's that's true right except for later on the the, the corporates kind of uh, took advantage and screwed us over in the long run but at the time it was all right i suppose well yeah i think there was some some crashes in the 80s as well well yeah there's always going to be some some turmoil there's never you're never going to have a full uh, you know a decade of just greatness but you know everything had had its ups and downs but yeah the seven sixties and seventies late sixties and seventies were very very hard times and uh yeah we're living those times right now and, and the division between us is is the same i would say and that's what i'm saying we're looking at the parallels now and the parallels that we have we try to compare ourselves to these but we're not we're not there yet guys and that's the good news the good news is that maybe that's to come maybe the next decade that we have is going to be like the 80s Maybe once we clear through the mire and the, 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 the fighting between, between the two ideologies that we have, the multiple ideologies. And, and here's the thing, guys. Um, you know, we all pick our sides. We all have our sides to pick. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely got my side. You know, mine is usually lying down because I'm tired. <laughs> That's not what I meant by side. I know what you meant. I'm just trying to bring a little levity into this conversation. Sue me. Sue, sue, sue me. Uh, now you're doing, now you're doing Genesis? Ah, leave me alone. Now you made me lose my train of thought. It wasn't a good train anyway. It was a train to, to Dumpsville, probably. Yeah, so guys, what I'm trying to say, we'll all, we'll all come out of this. We'll be fine. The thing is, we all in our way, we're all trying to do what we think is best. I think whether you're an SGW, whether you're not, we're all people. We're all people just trying to live our lives and trying to make things better. In our way, we will come together. We will, the two sides. Oh yeah, that's true meet in the middle somewhere and you know we'll, we'll, we'll progress as a society that, 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 that's true we are so worried about the future and what are we going to do but but these hard times are there for us to, to learn you know to teach us uh, to to grow and then when we come together we will you know we'll, we'll, we'll be good right like hands across america were you in hands across america am i american keep telling you i'm canadian with a new york accent because uh, you dummy decided to give me one so another thing I want to mention too is about Star Wars. Maybe another reason, like whether you hate the movie, whether you like the movie, the original series. Another reason I think people are attached to Star Wars has to do with the fact that it was in, it came during the 70s, in 1977, a time when all these dark and, and, and dreary times in the 70s, the new hope came out as a new hope. Maybe it showed something. Maybe it was like a like a, a spark that that kindled that that brought upon the '80s. Maybe that's why uh, we look at it so fondly, and that's why it means so much today. I think, and that's why I think right now we're also fighting over it so much. Is because when you look at what what they did to it, it's like you, you have a movie that was supposed to be about hope, pulling out of the crap into into something bright and beautiful, and then and then they pulled it back into some back to where you know we were trying not to be which was back to the dreariness and the depression and and oh yeah then the hopeless crap with the porgs oh my god with the, with the porgs again with the porgs you didn't like porgs I, I i i didn't much care for that you know looking at what they did to star wars they pulled it back into what we didn't want it to be we remember star wars as something that pulled us out of the mire this is a product of the mire and and that's the thing that's just why we're all together that's what we're looking at the world and we're looking at what they're doing to, to, to the movies. And we're saying, oh yeah, well they're rebooting this movie. And we're, it's an 80s movie. And we're like, oh yeah, 80s, woo woo woo. I remember the 80s was so good. But they're doing it with the goggles of the 70s. Or that time, you know, with tumultuous time. And so instead of making movies for its time, original movies where we could see where it's coming from, it's a confusing thing when they send us something that's, we bring, that brought us such hope and such love and passion. And then, but they, they, they give it to us in a way that, that feels dreary and dark and depressing and it doesn't add up our minds go into like this this like what the hell is going on mode and that totally happened you know you watch these movies and you're like to yourself this something ain't right about this thing you know i mean they, they didn't do that in the 70s right it's not like they brought back citizen kane and uh, in the 70s you know and, and rebate it into uh citizen jay <laughs> Oh, normal. You know, they didn't do that, right? This is what they're doing today, though. We kind of have to understand where we are as people. We're not in the 80s. We're not. Got to stop reliving that. We're not. If anything, we're in the 60s and the 70s, and the culture has to reflect what it is. And I think that's where the disconnect comes. That's kind of why we're all we're at war. Even with our with our movies, we're at war. But there's good things coming, man. This, this generation has its things, right? Oh, yeah, like uh, YouTube, for instance. Uh, when we look back into history, we'll probably say that this was the generation of YouTube and uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. And, uh, and this generation will be known for its YouTube revolution. Anyway, guys, 
We're all part of the YouTube revolution now, <laughs> so that's my two cents. Actually, he says two cents, but I'm thinking it's more like uh, 1.2 cents or something. Why? Why am I a shit? <laughs> Alright guys, so tell me what you think in the comments. Am I a writer? We, I, I, I believe. I mean, look through history. Guys, go look at some of these uh, these documentaries um, about the 60s and 70s. Do you understand what I'm saying? We will get past this. We will get past this. And, and we will be a better, better country and a better world for it. I 100% believe. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree with that too. Alright guys, so uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. Uh, like me more than him. Uh, he's, he's always writing my coattails. Why? <laughs> well yeah. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and let me know what you think in the comments. Yeah, yeah, uh, don't, don't, don't forget to tell me what you think about his hair, his hair. Anyway, thanks for watching, and... Again? Next time, warn me when you're gonna do that. Uh, snap, and, uh, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah.